Dear God, we come to you today asking for guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. I pray that we do not lead selfishly, but that we lead to benefit the community. This is my prayer. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to move down to agenda item three. Uh, in the agenda item three, I have a presentation of retirement award to Jerry Lee Michael, uh, who is retiring effective July 1st, 2023, after 30 years of service. Um, if, we, if you guys would allow me the opportunity, um, Matt shared some great words, and we want to share those words. Uh, in regards to Mr. Michael, and this is what Matt shared. Jerry Michael began his career with the city of Statesboro on June 21st, 1993, as a wastewater treatment plant worker. He obtained his Georgia class through wastewater operator's license in July of 1996 and was promoted to wastewater treatment plant operator. Throughout his 30 years with the city, Jerry has shown his dedication to the city and the wastewater treatment plant through his positive attitude and his ability to motivate everyone around him. Younger, less experienced operators have a hard time keeping up with his high level of energy. Anyone who knows Jerry has experienced his big personality and love for life in general. He has always kept a great attitude and work ethic, having set the example for every employee to follow. We are losing a valuable employee with many years of expertise but are grateful for his service to the city of Statesboro and wish him a long and happy retirement. And those are the words of Matt. Uh, I do want to take a point of privilege to say that I've been knowing Jerry for a while and everything that Matt has said is absolutely true. But I want to share with you guys that this work that he does for the city of Statesboro also pours over into the community. Uh, he works extremely dedicatedly, dedicated uh, with a youth basketball team that my son was a part of and I can't thank him enough for his patience, his love, and dedication. So we will, everyone, let's give, let's give Jerry a round of applause. Take this time to thank Matt. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm on your time. Okay, Matt <laughs> and the staff, especially Spella, for really, really helping me throughout these years. Uh, Darrell, Perkins, and Kevin, me and Kevin started together. So I want to thank them, Kevin, for showing me the way when I first started, Darrell, for just being there with me. All the family, and you've been there with me forever, too. So I would just like to thank all of them. Wow. Yes, sir. Step in. Mm -hmm. And then, keep going. Where's Matt at? Matt, counsel. Mr. Pink is way better. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna bring in. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get us out of the way. No, we're going to bring in and we're going to bring family in. That's where. Did you want Matt? Yeah, I call him Matt. Where's Matt at? <laughs> So we got oh, we're gonna bring them. Yeah, they, they all gonna. Get yeah, oh, yeah, they all coming. In. We're gonna let y'all get to the fun part. This is the tough part, right? Here. <laughs> no. Now, look. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, it'll be one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to do family dance now. Family dance now. Yeah. Yeah. Family. Can I take one step this way? Yep, right here. Sarah, she 
be a dance ball. <laughs> Tell us what you got. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Our co-workers. Come on, come on. Uh, here. And the family didn't have to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Patricia, you can stand there. Agenda item five was the consideration of a motion to approve the consent agenda, which is the approval minutes for our June 6th council and executive session minutes, as well as consideration of a motion for approval of surplus and disposition of multiple items, vehicles, equipment, etc., in the public works uh, streets and parks division. Is it a motion to approve? So move. Is that something? Take it. All those in favor. Aye. All right, we'll move down to agenda item six, which is the public hearing. In consideration of a motion to approve application, an application for 23 04 01 Delaware States, incorporated to request annexation of approximately 36.55 acre, acre property in order to develop a single family attached subdivision located on the Eastwood Road. Uh, is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Kathy, if you will. Yes. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, with your permission, I'd like to discuss both items six and seven jointly, although I would ask you if you would to vote on the annexation application separately from the zoning map amendment. Sure. Okay. Um, Ballard Estates, Inc. requests an annexation and zoning map amendment from the R40 single-family residential zoning district to the R6 single-family residential zoning district in order to develop approximately 124 homes on approximately 36.5 <coughs> acres of property located on Beasley Road. The property is currently a wooded lot with scattered wetlands. This project was originally brought forward with a plan to allow for over 200 townhomes. After a general revision to the plan, the applicant found that the development of single-family homes would be a better fit for the neighborhood and the area. The proposed plan lays out approximately 124 residential homes with a small amenity area. Although the proposed streets do not meet right-of-way requirements, the final plan must be brought forward for approval before building may take place. And you can see the site here outlined in red on Beasley Road. The future land use map shows this to be um, in the county, uh, although the county does um, clear, uh, uh, clarify this area as an established residential neighborhood as well. The current zoning map, again because it is in the county, is zoned R40, which is the county zoning. <coughs> the top left shows the property. Uh, uh, as it is. The bottom right 
shows the property to the west. The top left shows property to the northeast and the property to the south, the filter to the south, I'm sorry, shows uh, property to the south. The next slide shows the proposed uh, plan for the site. And staff does recommend approval of the annexation application AN 23-04-01, as well as the rezoning application, which is RZ 23-04-02. If this petition is approved by the Mayor and City Council, it should be subject to the applicant's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. One, approval of the zoning map amendment does not grant site and or building plan approval as submitted. The project will be required to meet all city ordinances and applicable building codes. Two, prior to construction commencement, the applicant must assure that the completion of a traffic study is submitted to the city engineering department for the purpose of confirming any possible traffic calming opportunities. And three, and I'm gonna make a, just a couple of minor technical um, revisions to the third condition, and that is that I would like to add the word a, uh, a preliminary subdivision plat, so I'm adding the word preliminary, must be submitted, and I'm deleting the words and recorded before the issuance of any land disturbance permits for the project. So therefore, it reads with the uh, revisions, a preliminary subdivision plat must be submitted before the issuance of any land disturbance permits for the project. Lastly, at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission on June 6, 2023, the Commission recommended approval of the zoning map amendment and staff conditions with a 6 to 0 vote. That is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here to speak for this report? Is it? Mr. Mayor and Council, my name is Lamar Smith, and I uh, represent Smith Family Homes in this project. Uh, first thing I would I just want to say about Mr. Jerry, you're just retired. He looks way too young to retire. <laughs> so whatever you're doing, he, he, uh, he is doing it well. Uh, I have a handout here that, that, so you can follow along and, and some information I'm going to provide for you. Uh, well, we may have to share a little bit. I think we just brought from here. Just a, a, a little bit of information um, about our company and, and a presentation about some of my work that I've done over the last 30 years. Uh, but before we do that, uh, you know, we, we gathered here a couple of months ago and we presented a, a, a multifamily attached product. And we, we know there was some opposition uh, from the surrounding community. So we went back and revisited this project and to, to understand what we could do to try to address some of those concerns that were brought to us at that, at that meeting before the council. And, and through that, we were able to go back and, uh, and hopefully offer an olive branch uh, the, to the community and hopefully offer, offer a, a project that would be better received. And that is we reduced the density significantly to do single family uh, for sale product, uh, fee simple product, and reduce the density by almost a hundred units, not quite a hundred, almost a hundred units. So, but if, if I could I direct your attention to the handout and to the uh, the screen, just to tell you a little bit about our project and, and myself. And uh, is a clicker up there, or there was somebody? Is it this right here? Yep. If okay. You just want to. Yeah, show me. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, just to I'll tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I've, been, I've been developing real estate in coastal Georgia in this region for a, about 30 years. And, I, and the reason I bring this up, because this is the first time really I've had a chance to address the council and, and do work inside the city of Statesboro on a project that we're taking from zoning um, to, uh, to land planning. We're doing a project now that was a failed project, and we are doing a turnaround off of a packing house road. So we've been working in, in Statesboro for, for several years but um, I, we really haven't come to you and, and kind of tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. 
But um, I, I, we started working in the, in the coastal Georgia area about 30 years ago. I have served on the uh, board as, as president of the Savannah Home Builders Association and as president of the Georgia Home Builders Association. I've been honored with Hall of Fame uh, nominations and, and acceptance in both of those uh, uh, um, organizations. Um, our company is a, is a small family-owned company, and we build from the Florida line up the I-95 corridor over into South Carolina and Bluffton, and then Statesboro is our, our most uh, westerly project. And, um, and we, you know, of course, we think with all the economic development going on, we think uh, you, you're in the path of growth. And uh, so we expect to, to come out just to, as much as we build along I-95 that we'll be building along the I-16 corridor as well. Um, so I know, I know you're right in the middle of going through your development ordinance um, and going through a lot of revisions and things, but i have just share some things that we may do that may even go above and beyond and even though if things these things are not required we think these help make a subdivision a neighborhood instead of just a, a subdivision of lots and one of the things we do is um is how is it's basically the, all the team that come together to work with us on a, on a community that's from land planning how the lots lay out uh, and then and even then to uh, the engineering team that we bring together to make sure our, our stormwater <coughs> is handled properly that our, our runoff is contained on, on the site. And so every so that everything works together. So water and sewer, those type of things. And then we, we, we bring we an architecture that is, is uh, um, symbolic of, of our, our region that fits well into the landscape. And that also that is durable and, and stands the test of time. And, that, and you know, a lot of that is so making sure we have houses where we don't have issues with water intrusion and the roof systems and things like that. And then the, the, the final thing is uh, the landscape design. It's how the house sits in the landscape, how it protects the community from the surrounding communities, and it protects us from the view sheds and things like that, and just what the what this, the homes look like from the street level. And this is a general layout of our community here. And this is the type of homes we're proposing to be building here. This is our, our Heartland collection. Um, and these homes, we, we when, when somebody buys a home for us, they, they we bring them in, they do a uh, a, a visit with our interior decorator and they get to customize this home to their specific needs and that's color selections and uh, material selections and they can they can upgrade it from there but one thing that we really try to <coughs> pay a lot of attention to is our interest so then when somebody comes into one of our neighborhoods they know that th their community looks different than everybody else's community so it, it, it creates a sense of place and so sometimes these are more elaborate than than others but it, it really sets a tone for, for what the neighborhood looks like and what it's, what it's like from the from the uh, public streets. And these are some samples of the projects we've done um, in coastal Georgia. Um, Can we expect one of those uh, <coughs> monuments? I'm um, sorry? Back up, please. Another one? You want to get two of those? Would you like one of those? <laughs> <laughs> that that actually, I don't know if I can even do one of those anymore. We 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 there was a gentleman that was repaving some of River Street, and he had all these stones left over, and we were able to reclaim some of those and use some of those from a contractor. But it will be uniquely designed for this community based on what our landscape architect says. But it would it would be some sort of a a, a brick or concrete monument out front, and then in, in the extensive landscaping. And those are the four models that will be. That, that there's typically, yeah, a, yeah, that, I think there's six, six in that collection. Six. That's right. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Um, and and, um, and and so the other the other thing is, I think is really important. We try to preserve uh, buffer between even even if it's like uses with residential. I think one of the biggest things that we can do as developers is to protect the view shed of the streets where they are coming by. Now sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes we're we're working in a, in a former agricultural field and, and it takes a while. Sometimes we can do that with berms and but sometimes it takes a while for that, that landscape to grow in. But if we can, if there's an existing buffer, we try to preserve a buffer between uh, even if it's residential against commercial or residential against uh, other residential uh, where we have the opportunity to do that. and. Um, and, and we think one of one of the best projects. So an example of this is a project we're doing in Bluffton, South Carolina, right now. And you're riding on Highway 46, and except for the entranceways, you, you're riding by hundreds of homes, and you don't realize you're riding by hundreds of homes. Um, uh, and this is an example of one. This this happened. I was happened to be um, 
over on um, St. Simon. This is a, this is in Sea Island uh, community, and uh, and right up in the top left hand corner is an apartment complex that is uh, immediately adjacent to you know multi million dollar homes, and uh, and there's just a small uh, planted buffer in between there, but you don't notice the multifamily from the single family. I thought it was a great example. I just I said this is exactly what we're dealing with, and this is a great example of how it practical use of that uh, planted material can, can take place. The other thing we've done, in a, I've been doing this since I started in this business, is uh, planting street trees. Preserving trees where we can, particularly in, in our area, our, our, our live oak trees, but also there's, there's nothing that adds, that, that, that adds and increases in value over time like a, a planted tree. And then this is uh, this is a, just an example. This is not one of my communities here, but I, I just saw a pretty, a pretty picture. This is a, a example of a, a project we did down in coastal Georgia, and it does a couple of things. The sidewalks we put, and I'll talk about it in just a little bit, but it pr provides a buffer between the pedestrian traffic on the sidewalk and the car traffic in the in the road, so that whoever's on the sidewalk feels a little bit safer when they're on the sidewalk. And I. Uh, so this is an example, some other examples. The other thing we do on our sidewalks, we make our sidewalks so they're walkable. We, we, we put a five foot sidewalk in so the two people can walk side by side. It's a, it's a it, I can put pools and tennis courts <coughs> and weight rooms in and 90% of residents won't use them, but they'll walk on a sidewalk and kids will play on a sidewalk. And so we think this is one of the most powerful amenities we can put into a community. And then the other thing is we think is important is, a, is gathering spaces. Sometimes this is um, an amenity, as, as elaborate as a clubhouse. Sometimes it's simply a, a fire pit or a playground for, for kids to gather on, for moms and dads to come sit out beside and watch their kids play. And sometimes adult gathering areas to, to, to sit around and enjoy the afternoon. And the final thing that we try to do is HOA governance. It sets the rules and it sets the tone for what happens inside that community. It's, um, it's so that the, the residents can govern themselves about, you know, if they have an issue with a, somebody that's not taking care of their yard, they have, a, they have a, an HOA board, and we try to leave those HOAs in, in good standing so that when we turn it over, they're financially sound. It's the way they say that they're not coming back and complaining to the city. You know, I'm not saying you won't, have, you won't have somebody come in and address something with you, but we try to leave the HOA board in, uh, in good governance. So, with that, I will um, end my remarks and thank you for your time and I'll a entertain any questions. Uh, can I ask a question too uh, from your last slide? Yes, um, uh, HOA, uh, that is so important. They have the right HOA in the neighborhood. Um, anyway, um, how, how effective is y'all putting one on the, the neighbors, I mean, along the residents? Uh, what if in five years none of the residents want to be a member? Well, it's, it's, it's not it's board. not discretionary. You're, it it is it's, it was it's recorded and it's part of the the deed of that property when it's transferred over. That it's mandatory that they that they are a member of it and that they pay toward it. So they, there's actually the HOA can lien that property and to, to collect those dues. So just say say. Next week, Lamar gets hit by a truck, and Lamar goes away. The, the HOA documents give each homeowner in there the same rights as the declarant to enforce those laws or, or those rules we have in place with each other. Uh, so they, can, so if I, you know, I've got a, a beef, and you're you're not doing what something inside your, your the covenants that we've all agreed we're going to abide by, then I can hold you accountable in the same way. That the HOA board just so, you know, so it, 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 it's a it's a better way. It ensures everybody lives because we are we're not, we're not building on ten acre lots anymore. Um, we most people can't afford that anymore. Uh, so we have to say we here's what we when you buy into this neighborhood, you're saying we we know these are the rules where I want to have to live by so we can so we can live together and and, and, and keep a good looking community that goes forward and protects everybody's property rights. And baggage, I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here to speak against? <coughs> One more. Just one more. Let me take it. 
take this down? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Hey, I'm Susan Riley, 211 Timberline Road. Um, I apologize for not having a bigger posse with me tonight, but unfortunately there's two meetings going on, and I told uh, my neighbors I would represent them here as long as they told the county not to go up on our taxes. So the rest of them are over there talking about taxes. So. We know your posse. Huh? <laughs> you know your posse. Yes. <laughs> right. I, I understand. Anyway, over the past six months, I, I feel good that there's been significant developments on this project, and I, I have to thank the community involvement for that happening. I mean, number one, you had the opportunity to relook at your annexation procedures and update them and get them in line with the current Georgia law, and that was important for now and for your future in the future. Um, we're actually sitting here talking about zoning and annexation at the same meeting, a lot different than six months ago. Um, so those are very positive improvements. Um, we've gone from, like Mr. Smith said, from 214 homes down to 100, and, I mean 214 down to 124. There are significant homes, they're not rentals anymore. And, and we're all happy about those things. I, I think that's what community involvement's all about. And I'm happy that we came and my posse came and, and we, we got things done together as, as a community. And that I thank all of you and I thank the community for doing that. Um, we, we obviously know what the conclusions are gonna be tonight. I think uh, Statesboro Herald called it a foregone conclusion because we kind of got a hint of where the vote's going to be six months ago and so I'm a realist and I'm not going to ask you to, to change what you're uh, obviously going to do tonight but what I am going to ask is that you know I, I realize also that uh, Lamar's got an excellent layout and he's got some very good slides and uh, a lot of things that he says he's going to do but legally none of that's binding as Justin mentioned in the um, planning and zoning meeting that you know all this is just preliminary draft uh, drawing so what we're going to ask is that somehow we you know when this comes back to you and it's not a formal vote or whatever that you you hold them to their 124 max um, housing and that you hold them to some of the glorified things that he talked about today that sound very lovely it sounds like a very lovely development um, we ask that the buffers really be there. Um, our neighbors, um, particularly, are, are many of them very elderly and, and two of them homebound, um, live very, very close to that property. And uh, those buffers are very, very important for these two, uh, for all of the neighbors, but particularly the two elderly homebound women that stay there 24 7. Um, they sh I, he didn't mention how many feet these buffers would be, but we asked that they'd be about 30 feet and they'd be significant dense buffers that truly do what is designed to buffer that from, from these existing residents that have been there uh, most of their lives. Um, we also, you know, always contended that the infrastructure should come before development, um, but uh, as residents who use Beasley Road daily, we can't stress enough for the urgent need for improved infrastructure on that road. Uh, the current state of the road, the intersections, the lack of the pedestrian facilities is a safety hazard. Um, I see it every day. Um, I avoid bikers every day um, and, and pedestrians. As we get more and more people on those roads from Kiwana Road and from this development and potentially the development on Jones Mill, it somehow has to work into the budget. <laughs> Just as we're sitting here saying, you know, we don't want to, you know, have our taxes increased. I, I understand it's kind of counterproductive, I guess, but but at the same time, public safety has always been my personal reason for this battle, I guess, or this this thing, and, and at the foremost of all of our concern. Um, truly, um, we need pedestrian um, walkways or bike lanes from Highway 24 um, all the way up to Burkhalter. Um, we've got schools, we've got churches, we've got developments all on those roads. Um, we also need them from Jones Mill Road up towards uh, 
Mill Run apartments, Statesboro High area, uh, desperately in Willingway, where all those folks bike back and forth to uh, meetings. Um, it's, it's vital that you and other council members who haven't experienced that road firsthand try to make a, a effort to go over there at various times of the day and see what we see every day. Um, that's, that's mainly what I want to say. Our primary concern is the safety and well-being of our community. We urge that you prioritize our requests and allocate the next necessary budget to address these issues. By taking action now, we can ensure that Beasley Road becomes a safer, more enjoyable place to live, work, and raise our families. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're going to open it up for council discussion. Any discussions by council? Well, I had a question for Mr. Smith. <clears throat> uh, well, I've got a couple questions, but mostly related to your HOA. What percentage of ownership uh, is, uh, takes place? When does your HOA kick in? What percentage of ownership? It's, usually it's, in the early it's, it's recorded with the with the first home that's sold. I mean, it, it, before we start selling a home, the HOA documents are part of the first transaction. So the home, you, even if it, you were to only build, say, 20 homes, you'd have a homeowner's There would be an HOA, HOA formed in the very beginning. Okay, right. I just, mm -hmm. that's not the case in some places, so. Um, and then you're intending on selling all these homes? I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, just I gotta bet the farm on it. <laughs> it isn't the pack, the reason I ask is you mentioned the packing house road development. Isn't that development uh, a, a rental? Uh, Packing House Road is a, is a different project. Ta is. Packing House Road was was a, a project that was started prior to the recession, and a bank had it, it had gone into foreclosure. A bank had taken it back, and it sat there, I guess, for twelve or fifteen years. And we and we worked with your you know your your uh, utilities group to to ensure that all the underground utilities we could not see were still in working order because they'd been in the ground for so long for while, it yeah. took us about a year to go through the, to the through the due diligence on that but but packing house is in something called an opportunity zone and, and so it, it there were some reasons that we we turned that into a, a a rental community for that area because we we were concerned ab about the, the ability to sell all of those homes there were 150 homes in there plus there's going to be some townhomes up up front, so it it, it made it, there was a, some tax reasons also because it was in an opportunity zone. I got you. Any possibility to turn those back into single family ownership? There, there there's a, there's 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 two different exit strategies there, and it, and part, part one of them is to to sell to a, a single owner, that because those are platted as single family homes. That there is a, there would be an opportunity on for us to sell those as individual homes in the future. Okay, and, and the reason I ask is, just, and council will indulge me. Uh, home ownership is one of the best ways to uh, build community. Well, individually, I mean, Habitat's trying to build houses. We're supposedly trying to build houses. I mean, th there must be some reason we're doing that. Well, there is because it's a great way for generational wealth there's, to there's develop. There's no doubt about it. And we, and, and you know, unfortunately, we have a very high rental community already. And which is uh, puts strain on our, our resources, puts strain. So it's good to see that this particular subdivision is going to be sold, and that there is a possibility that down the road that other one could be single ownerships. Because you, I mean, John knows for sure. I mean, we've got single family properties that have appreciated eighty to a hundred thousand dollars almost overnight, and uh, you know. If, if it's owned by one person, well, only one person benefits. If it's owned by a thousand people, a thousand people benefit, mm -hmm. and the community benefits better. So, right. I, I, nothing, I, nothing, I can't agree with you more. <laughs> well, I pre appreciate you asking my question. Um, well, another question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> do you uh, agree to everything Nurse Riley was uh, asking, advocating for? I, I don't know everything she's advocating for. I, I, what I'm telling you, what I've shown your position, this is not unique to this property. Mm -hmm. This is, gotcha. we try to do this on every property. But it'll be something similar. It will be very similar. 
and, and it will meet or exceed your ordinances. <coughs> gotcha. That's it. What else? Say? What is the what is the buffer, sir? I mean, what, I, you mentioned a buffer, but you didn't mention the specifics. We were in council discussion oh, right now. Okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's on the Joe. Joe, do you remember? I don't, I don't recall the actual width. I think it's around 30 feet, but it's following the city's ordinance for R6, the buffer requirements. We, um, we have some natural wetlands in that area in the rear of the property that, of course, we can't mess with those, so we're going to leave those intact. But along with one of the property owners, their house is really close to the property line. Mm -hmm. So we have a buffer in there. I believe it's around 30 feet for a call. But I don't have that exact dimension. But what we were doing was following the city's ordinance. Okay. Right. Any further discussion by council? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Smith, I know you can't say for sure, but what, how soon do y'all anticipate this development beginning? When that man in that blue coat gets my engineering work complete, then we'll be ready to get started. Uh, now, I, I, I would think, realistically, I would think probably it, it would would based on his schedule and what your submittals are when we come back before you and present our engineering work to you I, 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 if I'm guessing it would take us six months before we start breaking ground out there it, it, may, it could be four months of everything if we hit your schedule just right but um, I'm, I'm saying it was somewhere between four to six months you know what pays overtime <laughs> I can't afford him like he is <laughs> the reason I ask about that is I'm sure you're well aware of the city's going through the unified development process with the codes and all and so we may have some some new stuff going for housing i'm looking at all those trees out there that have to come down to make room for tree, for new houses and so I'm, I'm hoping that the timing works out that we'll be under some new protections for trees so we can preserve some of those trees and at least put some back so that's just a possibility of what i'm asking about time uh, we we will plant hundreds of trees back in that Neighborhood, I can take I can take you on Packing House Road and show, show you what we're doing right now in our street tree program up there. I was glad to hear that you do the street trees. Yes, <coughs> Any further discussion from council? All right, seeing that there was none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that's for agenda item six. Yeah. Annexation. Yeah. And so for agenda item seven. Um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll move down to agenda item eight, which is a public hearing consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 23-05-07. Joseph Linnell requests a zoning map amendment from R15 uh, zoning district to the R6 zoning district on a portion of, of approximately 2.59 Echo property in order to develop single family homes at 218 Hill Street. Is that motion to open the public hearing? Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Currently, the property is a vacant lot with a number of heritage and historic trees on the site. The property has four sides of street frontage and is being developed for additional single family housing of 11 lots, I believe. Recently, the parcel was combined with the surrounding parcels as depicted in the sketch plan that is provided. So you can see the outline um, of the parcel in red along Hill Street. The future land use map shows this to be in a uh, half in the neighborhood center and then half in the established residential neighborhood. The current zoning for this is the R15 zoning district. The subject property is shown on the photo on the top left. The property to the west is shown in the photo on the bottom right. The property to the southwest is shown on the top left photo and the property to the southeast is shown on the bottom right photo. And this sketch plan shows the combination. The, they currently own all of this property and the um, um, area outlined in yellow is going to remain in the, um, in, the, in the R15 and then the area outlined in red 
is going to be divided up into um, uh, nine parcels. <coughs> Staff does recommend approval of RZ 23-05-01. If this petition is approved by the Mayor and City Council, it should be subject to the applicant's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. One, approval of the zoning map amendment does not grant the right to develop on the site without approval. All construction must be approved by the city. Two, due to the lot makeup, final subdivision of the property must be approved by the Mayor and City Council in accordance with Article 3, Section 3-1 of the Statesboro Subdivision Ordinance. Three, sufficient right-of-way must be granted to the city <coughs> pardon me, to ensure the appropriate road width of Anderson Street. <coughs> and four, the applicant must adhere to the Article 2 of the Urban Forest Beautification and Conservation Ordinance in order to preserve the heritage trees on the site under the guidance of the tree superintendent. At the regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission on June 6, 2023, the Commission recommended approval of the zoning map amendment and staff conditions on a vote of 6 to 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone here to speak for this request? Good evening, Mayor. My name is Mitchell Ball. I'm a uh, realtor here in Statesboro and I'm representing the buyer and seller. Uh, so I'll try to answer any questions I can for y'all. Make yourself available to my council discussion. Is there anyone here to speak against the request? All right, saying that there is none, is so there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We want to open it up for council discussion. Any discussion by council? The only question I had, since we don't have a really preliminary plan, there was a discussion of developing this property, but with with uh, back up, uh, I'm trying to remember, side street parking or backup parking, are these going to be individual uh, lots, individual homes? Uh, yes, these will be individual um, single family homes, and they will be on, they will be for sale. Okay. So they will be single owners. Gotcha. Thanks. <coughs> Any further discussion by council? <clears throat> I just know I was happy that the city staff is aware of the big trees already there and going to use the ordinance protections we already have to try to preserve the ones that are more than two feet in diameter. So I'm sure you're aware of that. And hopefully the developers are aware and will work with that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sounds like a good idea. More, more infill on more houses in town. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion by council? Seeing that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we move on to agenda item nine, which is a public hearing consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 230502. The Jamie and Michael Chalker request a zoning map amendment from the commercial realty zoning district to the light industrial zoning district in order to place a higher density granite application shop at 2735 Northside Drive West. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, Kathy, if you will. Yes. Currently, the property contains a vacant building with additional space for parking. The property has been vacant for at least one year, and no existing business license has been assigned to this property for at least three years. And the location is currently underutilized. The property is adjacent to both Highway 80, Northside Drive West, and a residential neighborhood. And you can see the property as it is outlined in red here along on the north side drive. <coughs> the future land use map shows this to be in a commercial redevelopment area. And uh, you can see directly behind it is an established residential neighborhood. The current zoning map shows this to be in the commercial retail area. Now the commercial retail area is sort of a a light retail type of zoning category as opposed to the highway oriented commercial which is a much more heavy uh, uh, use type of, of uh, zoning category um, and you can see again directly to the west is the, the residential area the subject property is shown in the photo on the top left the property to the north is shown on the bottom right photo Property to the east is shown on the top left, and the property to the south on the bottom right. 
Staff, however, does recommend denial of RZ 23-05-02, as it is staff's position as a proposed use is inconsistent with the city's comprehensive plan, as well as the fact that this use net net negatively impacts the existing residential neighborhood to the immediate west. If this petition is approved by the Mayor and City Council, it should be subject to the applicant's agreement to the following enumerated condition. One, approval of the zoning map amendment does not grant the right to develop on the property. All construction must be reviewed and approved by the city. At the regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission on June 6, 2023, the commission did recommend approval of the zoning map amendment and staff conditions with a six to zero vote. That is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Is there anyone here to speak for the request? Yes. Mayor, Council, how y'all doing? Um, I'm really just trying to uh, start a new credit company. Um, that property's been empty for many, many years. Um, and uh, I'd like to just try to bring it back. Um, the uh, the surrounding area has got a lot of similar businesses, not not light industrial, of course, uh, but fabrication of granite countertops is not, uh, we're fabricating, but it's not like, you know, uh, your normal higher end industrial type places. Uh, you know, this building used to be a metal fabrication shop uh, many years ago. Um, so, you know, we just ask that you guys consider our approval. Um, we can bring new business to Statesboro. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Where, I'm sorry, where is this located again? Uh, 2735 Tire. Northside Drive. <clears throat> it's right next door to the oh, tire place. Total Tire used to be Neville's, now it's Total Tire. Oh, uh, by the grocery. Is that a right here? No, it's a little bit. Northside Drive. You don't work down the street. You don't work down the street. Down past there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, it's just a family dollar in the dollar. Yeah. yeah. On the same side? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It has a lot of place one though. Yeah. Um, to start out, probably three or four, um, yeah. and then and then grow. We've got to grow a little bit, you know. Yes, sir. And that's what y'all are going to make is uh, granite countertops. Yes, sir. Uh, custom counters. Custom countertops. There you go. I apologize. Sorry. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Sit. Oh, thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak against the request? All right, seeing that there is no. Well, I have a question. We're going to get the council discussion. We're going to jump down the water. Just All right, sorry. <laughs> that's for us a little bit fast. So let's go ahead and close that out. Is there a motion to close? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, we're turning over to Councilwoman Shavers. So, what is the process of making granite countertops? Um. We receive a slab in from a vendor, um, and then we basically put it on a wet saw, um, cut the pieces, and then we polish them wet. And uh, any sinks that need to be cut, we cut everything wet so there's no dust in the air. Okay, so and it's not going to be hazardous to anybody oh, no in the community. Oh no, no, and no dust in the air. No, ma'am. Okay, that's where it's run off. Run off. We're going to dig a pit so that we can reclaim the water and reuse it in the saw. So we're trying to, you know, recycle as much water as possible. Oh, it won't be. Uh, oh, no, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. We're going to have a whole tight pit and, and reuse as much of that water as we can. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I appreciate you both, and I appreciate reusing a building that's already there and bringing new businesses to Statesboro. But my concern is the same thing staff has talked about. It's, it's just across the road behind you immediately where there are houses yes, and a church a little ways down so what what is going to be the problem for them is that there going to be some extra noise generated or I, I no dust no ma'am and i don't honestly i've been doing this 22 years and i don't think that there's going to be any more noise than the tire shop next door that's going to run the same thing we're going to run an air compressor and a table saw um it makes a little bit of noise but it's it's not that bad um and we definitely won't be working Round the clock, so you know when when others are at work, we're working, and you know when others are at home in the neighborhood, we're going to be at home too. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, um, Kathy. Do you have any any more information for us about the concerns about the noise? Well, it, it, it my position is that it, it's a light industrial use, 
and this is in a commercial retail uh, zone. And that, and the fact that it's inconsistent with the comprehensive plan and that the, there is a residential neighborhood behind it made me concerned about this. So. Gotcha, thank you. <clears throat> so it sounds like it's at the very edge of the, or just across the line of what's provided in each zone. But, but if there's not any hazard to the neighbors, I don't have a problem with it. I think we want to encourage small businesses and it's much better to have something happening there than that building sitting empty right into the future. Yeah, my concern was that it's going to be dust in the air and loud noise everywhere and I was going to vote for that. No dust. I don't, I don't even want to breathe that. Any further discussion by council? Saying that there was none, is there a motion? A motion. A motion for approval. Is there a second? I said motion to approve. Okay. Can we have a second? Yes, yeah, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Seeing that there is none, this agenda item nine has passed. Moving on to agenda item 10, public hearing consideration of motion to approve resolution 2023-24, resolution <coughs> exempting certain vehicles from marketing, uh, marketing requirement for one year. Uh, we want to ask for a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Penn. Mayor, members of the council, annually we come before you. Um, request an approval to exempt uh, vehicles, certain vehicles, but most of these vehicles are privately owned vehicles, uh, and the law requires that you exempt them on an annual basis. At one point, you could just do a blanket approval, but for the four years that I've been here, uh, uh, the annual uh, uh, exemption is required. Basically, the folks that uh, would be exempt would be like me, uh, my staff, that they drive their own personal vehicles. And so it's required that you approve this uh, exemption. I do recommend it to you for approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Penn. All right, is there anyone here to speak for this request? Is there anyone here to speak against? Saying that there is none, is there a motion to close the hearing? So, so second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All right. We'll move down for open it up for council discussion. Any council discussion? Saying that there was none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We'll move down to agenda item 11. Consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-25, a resolution to adopt the second amendment to the fiscal year 23 budget for each fund of the city of Statesboro, Georgia, appropriating the items shown in each budget as expenditures and expenses, adopting several items of revenue anticipations, and prohibiting expenses, expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding appropriated. Mr. Penn. Mayor, members of the council, this is our current year's budget, and this is the second amendment that's coming before you. Uh, and basically what we, what, what we're doing is uh, asking you to uh, amend our budget because an example I won't go through all of them but two of significance last year during the budget process one of the things that we had we had um, it wasn't in the original but we had talked about increasing property taxes last year and in the final outcome you did not increase those taxes however those uh, in the budget uh, document it is in, in included so we need to reduce that real property tax by a million dollars but then on the on the flip side uh, uh, some of the issues going on with inflation uh, in the past we have not had that much interest income so this year we're able to appropriate 1.1 million dollars in interest income and so we're asking you to appropriate that in this year's budget. That helps offset that other million dollars that, that we did, uh, did not increase those taxes by. Um, and uh, there's some transfers here and there. ARPA funds came in 
and things of that nature. We do recommend this um, uh, second budget amendment. I would say that after the new fiscal year, we'll be coming back to you for an, another budget amendment. Uh, but, but at this point, this is what we recommend to you today for the fiscal 23 uh, budget amendment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Penny. Any discussion by council? Um, did you say two meals were worth about nine hundred thousand dollars? Nine hundred sixty? Nine hundred fourteen thousand? Nine hundred fourteen thousand dollars. I thought uh, um, we had discussed it, and it was uh, equal to like one point eight million last year. This year? No, he's talking about this year. Yeah. And I think, Mr. Penny, you just give him the singular meal right yes yes so, so both yeah, the two meals meal would be the meal would give you nine hundred fourteen thousand yeah. two meals would give you i got you yeah. that's what i'm saying okay. yeah. no we're talking about last year's budget not next year's right. so right. Right. yeah okay Thank just checking. Okay. 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 any further discussion by council seeing that there is none is there a motion to approve is there a second second all those in favor all right, we move down to agenda item 12, which is consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-26, a resolution to adopt our fiscal year 2024 budget for each fund of the city of states where Georgia appropriating them out shown in each budget as expenditures or expenses, adopting several items of revenue anticipations and prohibiting expenses, uh, expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding available for appropriations. Mr. Penn. Mayor, members of the council, annually uh, you are required to adopt our annual budget at the June, at the June 6th meeting. Uh, you had the public hearing on the 2024 budget. Today, the action that uh, you're being asked to do is to approve uh, the fiscal year 2024 budget. Uh, in that budget, um, the total budget is $105,886,893. Now, in this budget, uh, there are um, some, we did recommend um, uh, two mil increase item today. Council is not setting the millage rate. Um, that will not occur until, uh, that will not occur until September. Uh, and our operating budget really is a little bit more than $50 million, but because of all the other funds that have come that are coming in um we hit that 105 million but that includes like SPLOS, t SPLOS, arpa funds and things of that nature uh and at this point i would just simply say this package does include um pay adjustments for all the <coughs> employees be a five percent pay adjustment for all employees and then also pay for performance uh, it does also include some increases in uh, wastewater, some solid waste fees. Um, but again, we have incurred, because of inflation, we are seeing added costs to our operations. Um, we do recommend this budget to you. It also includes our capital improvement plan for next year. Thank you, Ms. Bean. I want to open it up for council discussion. All right, seeing that there's no discussion, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We'll move down to agenda item 13, which is consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-27, a resolution adopting the state for state for a schedule of rates, fees, and fines. Mr. Pence. Mayor, members of the council, uh, in, in next year's budget, there were some rates and fees that were uh, recommended for approval and increase and so um, what this does is uh, actually amends the the um, you just simply adopt those new rate and fees uh, in your packet uh, you have the the uh, schedule of rates fees and fines and in in that document you also have highlighted in yellow those fees that were recommended for uh, approval uh, and we do recommend approval of, of this schedule. Thank you, Mr. Penny. Any council discussion? Saying that there was none, is a motion to I'm vote? sorry, Mayor, I do Go have ahead. a question. Uh, when did these fees kick in? The when did the July, increases? July 1. 
July 1. Okay, so most next people will year. see this on their next bill. Well, that won't uh, apply to their June water, though, only water used after July. Correct. I mean, seriously, I mean, somebody's going to ask me. It'll be after July 1st, so it will not be in when they get the June bill. They, they will not see it in their June bill, but we're going to have to have time to get it in the system. So most likely it'll be their August bill before they actually see it. Right, okay. that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Any further discussion by that? <coughs> Seeing that there was none, there a motion to approve. To move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Consideration of a motion. Agenda item 14 is a consideration of a motion to approve resolution 24 28. A resolution <coughs> authorizing the mayor to execute an FY24 operational service agreement with the Coastal Regional Commission of Georgia for public transportation services and assistance with the Georgia Department of Transportation. Mr. Pink. Mayor, member of the council, um, we just actually uh, initiated our uh, transit system uh, in the city of Statesboro. I think May 22nd was the first day. Last year, I think you had to approve this plan. It is an annual requirement. Uh, our transit system is operated by the Coastal Regional Commission. Uh, and so on an annual basis, you will have this come before you. Uh, for approval. Uh, we do recommend approval. Uh, the city is responsible for 50% of the cost of operation. The, uh, the funds that are uh, used to pay for that operation are uh, uh, T-SPLOS funds that um, in particular that were just approved for um, back in November. Uh, we do recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Any discussion by council? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'm thrilled we got the buses going. I think we're all thrilled the buses are going. I remember reading this last year, and I didn't understand it, and I still don't understand it, but I reread it this time. These four buses that we have running now are also going to be on call. So anybody who needs a ride in Statesboro can call and reserve 24 hours in advance, and one of the buses will go get them. I mean, it's happening simultaneously, Jason. Is that how? They're going to try to operate it. I think it's within a certain distance from the I don't think it's just right. I don't think they're we, going there. We, we have two different. Yeah, because people don't know. We have two different systems. There's two different systems. Right. There's one that we have our buses that run. You can call our buses, and if you live within a certain distance of an existing route, right, you can have them divert off the route and pick you up. You also have the coastal regional coaches, which you can, uh, for $3 a ride per county line, you can take anywhere in the 12th district. You can even take it all the way down to Brunswick if you want, because it's run by the Coastal Regional Commission. So we have two different services. Uh, the one that we run, though, you pretty much have to live near the route to get the special pickup. It does not go anywhere in town to pick up this. It, it does not operate down. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to clarify, because I knew that the other had already been here before the city buses got started. So that's continuing like it is. Yes. But the, the expansion to the local, when people can sit, stand by one of the stops, and eventually within an hour, a bus will come and get on and pay a dollar. But this extra thing, they call this the number. We need to have the number posted in. It is. Okay. It's, it's on the bus. Okay. So people can call if they want to be picked up and they don't, and, and they want somebody to pick them up at their house. But it has to be within. A mile of the round or a quarter mile, mile. Half mile, quarter mile, half mile, yeah. something like that. It's close proximity. It can't okay. deviate too much. It's just it's um it's see like when you're in Savannah and other places they utilize a certain funding source from the federal government, like an urban transit program, so they can have a direct fixed route. Um, ours is a rural funding program, so uh, fortunately it's so it has to be a little more flexible. But so GDOT well, allowed us to go to have that flex route. So it's, a dedicated fixed route and then the flexibility to deviate slightly off the course on request. Okay. So like I've been hearing from folks at the summit who said can it come here and pick us up? I mean we got 60 households there that are disabled or elderly so that could be a stop that gets added in the future but for now they're right there on the route they just don't have a stop so anybody there could call the number and have somebody get them the next day in 24-hour notice is that basically 
I had the first check in the bar. Right. And so I don't want to don't yeah. want to give you the wrong information. But okay. I, I just thought we can't people can't take advantage if they don't know exactly right. what it is. Yes, so. well, let, let us make sure we have the right information because mm -hmm. uh, again we're on Facebook Live. And, and right. I don't want us to, to, to put the wrong information out, but I think it's a valid point, and we can we can clarify that the next meeting as far as right. Well. And they should be able to call that telephone number in the CRC. That's the CRC's telephone number, and then they can give them the information. And it looked like reading it, they have a dedicated dispatcher for Statesboro. That's correct. So that number they call, they'll get somebody who knows the Statesboro route and can answer their question about sending somebody to pick them up. Correct. Thank you. Any further discussion by council? <coughs> Seeing that there's no that motion to approve. So um, moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. We move down to agenda item 15, which is consideration for a motion to approve resolution 2023-29, a resolution accepting the right of way of Gisum Neville Lane as a public street to be owned and maintained by the city of the state's board. Mayor, members of the council, um, we have a developer who has improved the roadway and the infrastructure and he wants to dedicate it to the city of Statesboro uh, and that for public right of way is an extension of a public right of way already uh, and we do recommend approval and acceptance of the, of the dedicated right of way. In the discussion by council. Send that there's none. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We move down to agenda item 16. Consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-30, a resolution amending the house assistant policy of the city of Statesboro. Mr. King. May I move to the council early in the work session? Uh, we talked about um, the housing policy that needed to be a housing assistance policy that needed to be uh, amended and basically what the amendment is is um, we extend the affordability and this is specifically for uh, reconstruction or uh, uh, of, of properties that are more than just a housing rehab uh, and so uh, in order to to be able to implement the use of the funds from the uh, interest from the ARPA funds, we are recommending that we extend the affordability period for reconstructed properties from five years to 10 years. Uh, and, and so in order for us to move forward, uh, this was what we discussed earlier in the meeting. I do recommend approval of the amendment to the uh, housing assistance policy uh, for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Is there a motion to any discussion by council? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I, I'd like at best, or at, at least anyway, to uh, table this. Um, and so that way we can consult with the director of the GIFTS program. Again, in my conversations with them, uh, doing individual houses is, is uh, one of the least effective from a community standpoint way of, of rehabilitating houses. And so I'd just like to consult with them. Uh, before uh, we make this decision because again in my discussions with him you know it's always been discussing broader uh, policies as opposed to fixing one house at a time because let's face it you fix three houses in 10 years we'll have 30 houses fixed that's not a significant impact in our day with the problems we have in the community so I'd like to table this and, and consult with with uh, with our with our get your folks at the state if that's all right perhaps even invite them to come down and discuss it Okay. Any further discussion by council? Yes, please, Mr. Mayor. Council Emporium, how what period of time would you be thinking you would want to delay it, table it? Uh, uh, until we can get somebody from, from uh, Gitch down here, I would imagine we could do that in the next month or so. I hate to disappoint three families who are eligible <coughs> and are looking to get something done, and like Mr. King pointed out about other things, we want to do it right. Okay, so wouldn't that entail then seeking advice? Saying. Yeah. Well, my, um, I'm not opposed to tabling it, but uh, what I am opposed to is tabling it for too long because we already been waiting. Like, I mean, we're doing the housing already. We're just not doing it for well, reconstruction I mean, of individual houses. Exactly. I, I know what we're doing. I'm okay. saying that what I'm opposed to is tabling it for too long. 
so I don't mind the table. But two months out, no. I'm ready to vote now. It's gonna be that long. So we're meeting again July the 15th. The, the, I'm the, sorry, the 18th. July the 18th. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not opposed to tabling until then. Maybe we can find something out by then. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're going to direct staff to find out, or we can have somebody come here and give us a presentation on the work session. One of the two. But as I said in my discussions and, and in my, you know, I mean, sat on the committee, I mean, the, these individual houses are not the best. I mean, look, I get it. I, I get what we're trying to do. I mean, but we can't be led around by heartstrings. We have to make decisions to it based on the entire community. And you, when you're doing one house at a time, one house at a time, it's just one. It's not what the city should be doing. We should be doing broad-based decisions. And then two, it's just, it concentrates the money on, on a, a, a select few, as opposed to creating policies that could build uh, better housing for a lot more people. So that's why I want to table and that's <coughs> making the motion to do so until we have somebody from uh, Gitch give us some feedback on this policy. Okay. Well, I, I'll just to add my two cents just for council consideration. Um, well, my, right now we have eight eight homes that's been that's under contract so far. Yes. All right, and then we got a bid out for twenty one other homes. Yes. And all of these homes are going to be homes that we're going to repair, correct? Right. All right, and so we got a total of eighty three applications, right. and so we're looking at about looking at about about twenty five percent of those applicants. We're already addressing those now. But in this space right now, we're only taking three properties that we're looking at to actually rebuild, correct? Right. Okay, so we've got 25% of the properties already in the harbor. We're using three of these properties um, to rebuild homes that's so damaged that we're not going to be able to repair them and they'd be okay. Now, one thing about us doing this, going ahead and doing both of these, is that it actually strengthens our applications when we're trying to get additional funding so that we can continue the work that we're doing. And I can understand, I get what uh, Councilman Boyum is saying, um, if we were doing, you know, 10, 15 properties currently. But we're only doing three properties, and those three properties is just basically going to give evidence that we are eight, that we're capable of doing the renovation as well as the rebuild. Is, am I understanding that correctly, or am I missing something? Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so it's on council, whatever council, if council decides that they want to table it, um, or tell council can make the decision to uh, go ahead and vote tonight. May I clarify one of your numbers? Uh, 83 is just the first batch of applicants. Yeah, that's right? the first batch. Right. So mm -hmm. there were many, many people who complained that they did not make the application. Mm -hmm. and so which means know. there's possibly hundreds more people who want mm -hmm. just the baseline. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting at here is if you put all that money into three, a lot of money into three houses, you can't do a little bit of money for 30 people. You see what I'm getting at, and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. And I, if if that is the case about the grants, then our Gitch representative will, will give us that and say this is indeed the, the case. So I don't think uh, waiting a month this is going to, to hurt anything to get clarification. Again, this is council's decision. I just want I to make a point of, point of clarification. But you're absolutely right. We did a window shot, and we got two three hundred homes that's in the city <coughs> that we could really be working on all simultaneously. So yeah. That yeah, it's I'm, a lot. I'm willing postpone or table. All right, so we need we need a motion. So move to uh, to table and seek advice from our uh, gift uh, counselor, uh, advisor, representative. Second. Okay, that's second. Okay. All right. Wait, 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 amend the motion my motion is to delay uh, to, to table until we get feedback from our get representative who tell us about the grants and give us professional advice on what we should do with our project we we spent three years on this get program i don't see why we shouldn't <laughs> seek the advice of these folks i think that makes sense if that takes six weeks then that's okay two weeks is not going to make it or break in a home construction you know mm -hmm. i do we have a second with the amended no, I didn't amend anything. Okay, so you just want to leave it open? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so you're going to second that? All right. Well, I'm going to make a motion to table it. Okay. But you have the Gish community a representative to come in on our next work session. But that's not to August. That's not to August. Oh, God. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd kind of like to hear from that guy first. Mm -hmm. Have we sort of think on it, you know, on what he has to say. Does it have to be a work session, Mr. Penny, or can he just come in? Yeah. For a presentation? I, I, I would like to share something. Go ahead, Mr. Penny. So, I think it's fine to wait. However, uh, I do want to just be clear about um, what we are attempting to do with the housing. Um, we, first off, we're not uh, an entitlement community. Uh, and this council chose to use the ARPA funds to try to do something that otherwise would not get done in this, in this, in this city. And that's why you took $5 million to use to try to help rehab homes. But even in, in doing that, there were 28 homes that are so severely damaged mm -hmm. that you cannot repair them. So uh, replacement housing, and I'm fine with talking with folks from get, uh, and, 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 it's, and it's fine, but uh, sometimes you also have to, 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 to lay new ground uh, and to, to show people how uh, to make impact in, in the community. Uh, and that's what I see our council is doing. Um, as a part of the policy that you that you approved with the consultants that you selected to operate our housing rehab program, this was a part of the reconstruction was a part of the policies that you approved. So we can we can talk with them and we can have someone to to come and and whether we have a special meeting, but again, we weren't going to have a work session in July. Uh, but they don't have to be in the work session to come to a council meeting. Uh, but but I just want to say, we are trying to do something that's a little bit outside the box in order to, to help improve housing conditions uh, in Statesboro. And, and we were also blessed with uh, the interest from the ARPA funds that provide us an opportunity. I remember when we first came to you and we mentioned the, the issue uh, with doing replacement housing, uh, and you were you were exactly right. If we had jumped out and done 30 houses on replacement, we would not be able to impact the number of homes that that are that that could possibly be impacted. But but this was just an opportunity to demonstrate that we do have some homes in our community that are so severe that only replacement reconstruction would would be uh, the way that those homes could be improved. But we will be glad to reach out to the folks from GIF uh, and talk with them. But I can tell you in many ways, uh, when I look around Georgia, there's some things in Georgia, uh, as far as housing that we are doing that are far behind what other states are doing. And so I'll just share that with you from my experience. Any further discussion? Okay. And, and as a point of clarification, um, staff, can you tell me how much money we're putting towards um, revitalization of, of the homes? Not rebuild, but just the revitalization. Just the individual homes, it's about $50,000 per home. No, I'm talking about collectively. Oh, collectively. So um, depending on what we get back with these bids, uh, the initial batch of them that we had was uh, about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars total, um, so that money will be going pretty quickly once we get this next bid packet out of the way. Okay, and how much of the ARPA funds are we putting towards um, re rest uh, restoring homes? Can you clarify that a little bit? How much of our ARPA funds are we using to put towards fixing up the home? Five million dollars. Five million dollars. Five million. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let's, let's and so. Okay. Say that again. Less, less the admin fees for the consultant. Less the admin fees. Yeah. So five million dollars. Well, that was a about four point five, five million. Yes, and so oh, more. And so, more. And so right. of those ARPA funds, and we're just talking about the interest, correct? Uh, that's what we're using for uh, the, the real deal. Yeah. And so we're looking at about how much. Three hundred thousand. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. it's three hundred thousand. Okay, so we're investing four point five million dollars into the actual we fixing up home. Yes, sir. And we are only talking about three hundred thousand dollars for three homes to fix up. Three hundred additional thousand. Yes, okay. Sir. All right. Okay. All right. 
Any further discussion for, for council? We, we do have a motion with a second. If there's no further discussion. Um, is there a motion to approve tabling? Um, tabling um, this agenda item. We've got a motion on floor to second, so we're voting for that motion now. Is that what yeah. You're so all those that's in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Get on. Aye. Second. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Second. Okay. Uh, we already had second. We was casting the vote. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Deported it. Okay. All right. So you support the motion? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so that is uh, the motion um, states that it will be tabled. All right. So we move down to agenda item 17. Consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2023-31, a resolution to accept a grant from the governor's office of planning and budget for the city of State for a police department in the amount of $565,942.33. Second. Mr. Penn. Mayor, members of the council, uh, the police department had applied for this grant of $565,942. Uh, and basically is to for the expansion of the flock license plate breathers uh, to purchase some more abuses uh, core process and some pole cameras and gunshot detection sensors that integrate with the flock system now the, uh, the, the, the sensors and the flock LPR those will be through a lease for the period of the grant uh, however um, and, and so that lease is good for three years and then at the end of that period, we'll need to determine uh, if, if we want to continue with the operation of those. Uh, but tonight, what we need is for the mayor and the council to approve the acceptance of the grant from uh, the governor's office uh, in the amount of $565,942.30. We re do recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Penn. Any discussion by council? Seeing that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we move down to agenda Aye. item 18. Second reading and consideration of a motion to approve <laughs> ordinance 2023-05 or ordinance amending sections 2.55 and 2.57 of the ordinance code, our sexual code of ordinances in order to expand the one borough commission member to, membership to 16 members and to incorporate the mission and scope and of authority of the Healthy Borough Mayor Ad Hoc Committee. Mr. Bill. Uh, actually, City Attorney. Sure. Uh, Mayor Council, uh, as stated in the memo, it, it, would, it would increase the membership from 12 to 16. Furthermore, it would, it would uh, incorporate the uh, Mayoral Ad Hoc Committee, the Health, Healthy Borough, which has and so it would have further uh, scope of authority to prepare studies and reports relating to health initiatives and concerns. <coughs> All right, thank you. All right, any discussion by council? I will once again state my objection to having 16 people on the committee and way too many people, and you will eventually find it becomes unwieldy to manage. Okay, any further discussion by council? So we combine these two. Commission. Yeah. Correct. Right. Actually, more like uh, adding a uh, healthy borough to a right. bigger umbrella of one borough. Healthy borough was never a commission. Because it, 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 it used to be squatching the spread, right, and right. it became a mayoral ad hoc committee. So you combined the two groups mm -hmm. to be one. Very cool. mm -hmm. okay. right. Any further discussion by council? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. All right. We'll go down to agenda item 19, which is consideration. I'm sorry, can I just clarify? Some of them were asking me. So now we will have to open up an application period for those four new slots for folks to fill out. I mean, we're attending. It's going to be folks from Healthy Borough. But if they're being named to a city commission, they need to fill out the application. It needs to be open to everybody. Is that right? That was my assumption, but I just wanted to clarify that's how we should do it. Sounds great to me. Yes. Okay. So, will you all let us know when the time period is and people can play on make a, play on make a post and fill the position and appoint whenever? 
since we're not meeting again till the 18th, maybe we can afford the end. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, we move down to agenda item 19, which is consideration of a motion to authorize the mayor to execute a contract for services with the Statesboro Arts Council Incorporated to market downtown Statesboro by operating and managing the Avery Center for the Arts using proceeds from the hotel motel tax. Mayor, members of the council, annually we have we have <coughs> an agreement uh, with the Avery uh, Center for the Arts. Uh, and we recommend approval. They will receive 25.1% of the hotel motel excise taxes. Recommend approval. All right, let's open up for council discussion. Any discussion by council? They do a great job. <clears throat> we get to work with them again. Any further discussion by council? Seeing that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. We move down to agenda item 20, which is consideration of a motion to approve the mayor to execute a contract for services with the Downtown Statesboro Development Authority, Main Street, to market Downtown Statesboro using proceeds from the hotel motel tax. Again, Mayor. Again, Mayor, members of the council, uh, this is an annual agreement with the GSBA. Uh, for marketing our downtown, and again, they received 19.9% of the hotel motel excise tax. Uh, we do recommend approval. I'm going to open up for council discussion. Again, they do a fantastic job. They're here to work with us. <coughs> All right, any further discussion by council? Seeing that there is none, there a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll move down to agenda item 21, which is consideration of a motion to authorize the mayor to execute a contract for services with the Statesboro Convention and Visitors Bureau Incorporated to market the Statesboro and Lowell County using proceeds from the hotel motel tax. Mr. Penn. Again, Mayor, members of the council, uh, this a, an annual agreement with the State Broker Convention and Business Bureau Incorporated and again they receive 50% of the uh, uh, hotel motel tax and uh, we do recommend approval. Right. We'll open up for council discussion. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Penny, again they're super out there. We're doing this but I'm wondering, I'm adding it up to 95%. Does the city retain 5% as administrative? Okay, I'm just, just curious. Yeah, we did. Great, thank, thank you. you. Right, any further discussion by council? All right, seeing that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, move down to agenda item 22, which is consideration of a motion to approve an amendment to, pro to probation service contract between, between city and judicial alternatives of Georgia to increase monthly fees paid for regular supervision to $45 and intensive probation to $55 a month. Both representing uh, ten dollar monthly increases. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor member of the council, <laughs> city attorney may need to help me out, but this is um, we have been requested by the probation services uh, group uh, to increase the fees, and basically due to inflationary costs, and so they're asking that the fee be increased. I think ten dollars. Um, for um, the regular supervision and then $10 for, which would go up to $45, and then uh, $10 for uh, intensive probation, which would go up to $55. Uh, and so we do recommend approval. It's not anything that we would pay, but it's what the uh, users of those services would, would pay. So we do recommend approval. Okay, thank you, Mr. Payne. So open that up for council discussion. Saying that there is none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. We move down to agenda item 23. Consideration of a motion to approve a contract with Title Technology Software and Content Manager ERP Pro Community Development Suite of Title Payments in the one time amount of $31,990. 
for the annual support fee of $4,940. This is a sole source purchase and will be paid from central services and city clerk budget. Mayor, members of the council, this uh, title of software is what we use in our business office. And, uh, the city, city clerk uses that and how people pay their, uh, are able to pay bills. And, and with this software, we actually will be to pay, pay online and things of that nature. So we are going to know a lot more about it than I do. Uh, but we do recommend approval. It is a sole source. Uh, I think the, by utilizing them, uh, we will make a seamless uh, transition and upgrade of the software that we currently have. For uh, business license. For, for business license. So we do recommend it to you. But she can tell you more about it than I can if you have questions. Yeah. So yeah, what it is, we have a third party right now, the um, program that does our business licensing, alcohol licensing, permitting, special events, stuff like that. This would bring it into the actual product that we are using now for taxes, utilities, and all of that kind of stuff. Are they also, is have that also got techner, the Tyler Technologies? Sir? Is that also techno, tech, Tyler Technologies that yes. you're uh, meshing with? Yes. Oh, okay, so it's like General Motors or General Motors? <laughs> So we use them already. But it's like a it's a third party though. But yes, it is it is one of their products. So that when it merges in with us, it will be easier. But it has an interface with their, our website, and businesses will be able to take things online. So. All right. Any discussion by council? Saying that there's none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll move that to agenda item 24, which is consideration of a motion to approve the updated contract to municipal court software with Justice One, formerly Corporate Government Software Solutions, to increase per paid citation from $6 to $9 or $1,500 per month, which is whichever is greater. Um, Mr. Penn. Yeah, Mayor, this is a, a request from our uh, municipal court clerk uh, and um, so, so we're seeing an increase in that cost. It was concerned that it may exceed the value of what I could approve. Uh, so that's why we're coming to the council to approve the increase from the six dollars to the nine dollars, uh, nine dollar fee. Again, it's not a fee that we pay. It's a fee that is paid by the users of, of those services. And so we do recommend that you approve the increased fee for this service. And this, and if you have a lot more questions, Ms. Cindy's back there. That she has my back and can help me out. Ms. Cindy? This is what happens anytime you say Ms. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said that's what happens anytime you say Ms. Cindy. Um, good afternoon. Yes, uh, we currently use Justice One. Um, we did a contract four or five years ago it was six dollars as with many businesses what they have found that during the during COVID they were not collecting their fees to be able to pay their employees so what they have done is established a minimum of fifteen hundred dollars a month what we would have to do just in case we did not make fifteen hundred dollars we would have to make up the difference but the violators when they pay their citation that is paid online this software is integrated throughout the state with the Department of Driver Services and other agencies that rely on that information when people are issued tickets or citations. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Anything further from Council? Senator, there is none. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We we'll move down to agenda item 25, consideration of a motion to approve an agreement with Condry and Associates in the amount of $52,500 to conduct a classification and compensation study beginning in July, beginning in July 2023. Mayor, members of the council, uh, going back to our retreat, uh, we talked about um, our, our pay and classification study uh, and the pressures that we are all under 
uh, with the booming economic growth that's um, coming to our communities. Uh, and at that time, we, we talked about utilizing uh, a consultant to do a, a new pay and classification plan. The last one was done in 2019. Uh, and, but I think conditions have changed uh, with uh, the advent of Hyundai and the uh, other suppliers that are coming to our area. And so what we are recommending to you is that we utilize uh, Conjuring Associates. Um, we could go out for um, um, requests for qualifications. However, um, as, as uh, Dr. Howahan shared with you when we were at our retreat, right now to call Vincent uh, Institute is two years out before doing any new pay plans because it seems that across the state uh, this is something that is, is, is being sought after because again the labor issues are, are not are significant across the country uh, and everyone is competing uh, for personnel and, and, and trying to make sure that their pay plans are in line and so what we recommend to you is that we utilize Dr. Stephen Condry uh, and associates to uh, do a new pay plan that would be for your consideration for implementation in July of 2024. Uh, and again, the cost is $52,500. We are bringing it to you tonight because again, we don't meet again until July the 18th. Uh, and we anticipate that the 1st of July, we, we would begin the process uh, that is involved in, in doing a comprehensive uh, paying classification study. I do recommend approval. All right, let's open it up for council discussion. Do we have a relationship with Dr. Country before, or is this somebody we've used? It, it, we do have a relationship. We've had a relationship. He's the one that bring, he's our consultant when we do paying uh, uh, classification studies. We go to him and they ask them to, to evaluate the work, and they may do the study for us uh, ourselves. Uh, Dr. Conger has a long history across this country and in the state uh, and uh, is, is very well, well thought of and, and respected. Uh, in fact, in my previous uh, employment, we used Dr. Conger to do the pain class study even in, in North Carolina. So he has a long history and reputation across the country. Thank you. Any further discussion? I right, send that there is none. Is there a motion to approve? To move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we move down to agenda item 26, which is consideration of a motion to authorize the mayor to execute purchase agreements for right of way acquisition to perform sidewalk construction on West Main Street. Right of way and easement acquisition will be funded by 2018 T Splots. Mr. Pitt. Mayor, I don't know that I can add anything else. We have the specific parcels laid out. Um, we do recommend approval. Okay. All right. Any further discussion by council? Oh, Mr. Mayor, yes, please. I'm just curious why I haven't seen this before in three and a half years. Like we've done sidewalks along on Jones Street, but was it just that we didn't have to acquire any rights of way? Is that the difference? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. It, it, typically, well. Uh, usually have a dedicated right of way <laughs> and depending and and it just depending on uh, how um, a road is constructed usually the state's going to get 60 to 100 uh, feet of right of way uh, and you build within that right of way but uh, in, in going back in years usually uh, they just took what it could, what they needed to build the road <laughs> and didn't and didn't get any extra. Nowadays we want that sixty we want to sixty, <laughs> uh, 60 foot 60 right away. Uh, so that, that's where all of our inf infrastructure would be, that's where our sidewalks would be. And we like to I would just put it this way. Um, if it was my property I wouldn't want to just give it to you. That <laughs> and so that's what we're doing. We're paying them what we believe to be fair market value for the property. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mr. Penny. Any further discussion? All right. All right. 
we move down to agenda item 27. Yeah, we have a we have on that. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, moving on to agenda item 27, which is consideration of motion to authorize the mayor to execute the purchase agreements for right away acquisition on Gentilly Road for sidewalk construction. Right away and easement acquisitions will be funded by 2018 T Spots funds. Mr. Pena. Uh, again, Mayor, this is um, more right away acquisition? Yes, sir. Any, any discussion? I recommend approval. Okay. Any discussion? No. I'll send it. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All right. Move down to agenda item 28. Consideration of a motion to amend contract in the amount of $18,677.70 with McClendon Enterprises to create work to correct curb and gutter conditions not found during project. Project design with the West Main Street drainage improvements project. This project was paid for by stormwater fund balance. Mayor, members of the council, this is a change order, and again, we're doing that, that work, and, and, and we just found that we were missing some curbing. And in order for it to have right, proper storm drainage, we need to make sure we got the, the curb and gutter and driveway in place, and that's what this change order is all about. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bain. All right, council, any discussion? All right, Senator, there's a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. All right. <coughs> we move down to agenda item 29, consideration of a motion to approve an amendment to the current Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank Agreement for an extension of spend down, uh, of spend down date. The city would like to request a, and this is a corrected um, part, instead of three years, should we two years? Right. Spend down extension. Uh, funds would be used to supplement eligible costs to include right of way acquisition and construction costs. Mm -hmm. Mayor, 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 Council, this is about the roundabout that we've been talking about. And so what we're basically doing is ask for an extension of time that we do recommend approval by Council. All right, thank you, Mr. Finney. Any discussion by council? Any? Good. Go ahead, Phil. Please. I was just going to ask some more information, but maybe your question will help me with that. Uh, when are they going to start? <laughs> <laughs> what's the anticipated start date? Do we know? And what's the hangover? Are we just waiting on GDOT? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean train tracks, roundabout, five way stop. It's a little tricky. <laughs> I think construction is in 2025. I'm not 100% certain. I think they have in 2025. Have, have we even shown to the public where the, the roundabout is proposed to go? Yes. I'm GDOT's mercy. I don't, I don't think that, that's even been done yet. No, no, we say that. They went through a comment period a few months back, and I haven't heard anything. We have not heard anything back from them since then. And, and as I told y'all, you know, we just finished South Main Street. <laughs> And, and, and we're gonna, and then all of a sudden, we're gonna have this work going on, and one day we're gonna do, be doing the creek on the Blue Mile, and so it, it just be one continuous project, but uh, we don't know when. But hopefully, before sometime at the end of 2025, the roundabout will be in place. Okay, Ms. Barney, that your question. Started or in place? So we have a million dollar grant, but started. we haven't started a grant awarded, but we haven't been able to spend any of it because we're waiting on GDOT to approve the project, basically. But there, there's a time limit on how long we have to, to draw it. These funds, I believe, are part of our commitment to provide the match for right of way property acquisition, which is in GDOT scheduling at the mercy of their project schedule. And so we've had to. Ask for continuance. And we don't want to get out of sequence. We cannot get out, of get out of sequence. They're using we federal dollars. We could jeopardize funds, or, and we don't want to do that. <coughs> oh, yeah, I forget that's 3012. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, yes, please do whatever it takes to keep that money in right. that all in the plant. That's what you're saying. Any further discussion? All right, Senator, there's none. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. We move down to agenda item 30. Consideration, <coughs> consideration of a motion to approve an award of contract to Hubbard and Hudson Construction for renovations of Fire Station 2 in the amount of $443,800. This project will be funded by 2019 splits. Mr. Penn, Mayor, members of the council, we, we have actually been out to bid twice on this project uh, and, and it's not going to get any cheaper. And so therefore, we want to recommend to you that you approve the award of bid uh, for the amount uh, $43,800. Um, we need to go in and get the work done uh, and we're bringing more people into our uh, because of the uh, safer grant and all, um, but um, we do recommend approval. And we'll also, the good thing is, our SPLOS funds are coming in stronger than, than what we had originally anticipated. So therefore we can, we'll be able to uh, cover the additional costs. But we do recommend your approval. Okay, all right, Mr. Penn. Um, Conversation by council. No. No. All right. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. We'll move down to the 931. Consideration for a motion to approve a development agreement with um, Nevada Partners LLC to use $119,000. $572 in tab funds for installation of private infrastructure within the development commonly known as Mulberry on the Mile, located at 233 South Mulberry Street within the South Main Tax Allocation District. Mr. Okay. Mayor, the council, uh, again, this is in the uh, South Main Street tag uh, area. Uh, it, we received the application that went before the tag committee uh, last week two weeks ago, I think, on the 8th. Uh, and they did approve it. Therefore, we are required to bring it to the uh, council for your approval and for uh, the agreement. Uh, we do recommend approval. Um, it's a significant investment by the owners. Uh, and they're looking to use the 119,000 again for installation of private infrastructure within that development. We do recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Could we describe that private investment? And the only reason I ask is I was under the impression TAD funds were supposed to be for public infrastructure, sidewalks, uh, public stuff, <coughs> not designed to reimburse construction costs. Well, it's probably. I, I was going to say if we if you think back to the first TAD application that we had, uh, and which would be the West District, right? Mm -hmm. That, that improvement was on private property. Mm -hmm. it, it, the courtyard is not is not public property. It's still it's private property. That we want to, um, yeah, it, it, it's not on public property. Box on That's correct. Box on or North Box on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Again, I, I was just under the impression TAD funds were supposed to be used for things like public space sidewalks, you know, to enhance the, the, the project, not just to reimburse uh, investment, but maybe I'm off base. Uh, again, I'm a little tired. It, it's, it falls to the, it's, it goes to the black four test of like, of the, would, would the development be as, be as attractive, but for the tech, the use of the increment funding in there? As long as it doesn't exceed 15% of the project cost, um, it, it, there really isn't any issue on whether it's used for, um, for, for private in that regard. Well, it, 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 but for is the argument then, they're already building it. So they're seeking a reimbursement, not investment. Well, I said, I said to the level. I see. Yes, so there is a, there is a so distinction. This is, a, this this is, is an additional? Enhancement. Yes, this would be what's enhancement. the enhancements then? That's what I was looking for. Yeah, this is more of an enhancement <coughs> to the um, to the exterior and to the um, and to the common areas of the of the complex. But um, we do have we do have um, 
John Wells here, the developer. If you don't have any specific questions, he can probably answer. No, no, I'm, I'm interested in tab policy, not yeah, it's, specific. It's, it's just, would, would it be able to be at this level and be able to you know, increase the value of, have the halo effect? That's one of the big questions in the tab is, is there any sort of halo effect? Does, it, does this make the outside a little better? And, right. and that's that's a big consideration on those enhancements. Is, is does do the benefits flow off of the property? And this is Davenport and Company. The term of said application needs the parameters of the tag program. Is it okay? And I think that's probably just the fifty percent project cost <coughs> right. in there. They wouldn't be going to the to the you know value of it. Any further discussion? So this is the first time to me, I think I've heard about Mulberry of a Mile. So this is an application for a new town. That's not a town. It's in this downtown. It's in the South Main so, downtown town. It's, it's in that um, original one from 2013. But, so that's, that's, yeah. what, that's what I thought. So yeah. So, so it's just they're trying to make their own. No, no. It's within the it's within the tax allocation district of the. Um, the, the South Main TAD does not just encompass South Main. I mean, it goes all the way. It encompasses that YMCA property right. over there. It gets the it gets the dealerships down on on the bypass. So they're they're not even all connected. But this one is within the main body of the downtown TAD. And, and I think where they get the name Mulberry on the Mile is to go back and look at the original documents, the Blue Mile concept and the Blue Mile Foundation. It's not strictly South Main Street. It's the the neighborhoods that are adjacent to South Main Street. That area. It's Walnut Street. Goes towards College. It's on the west side. It's it's um, Mulberry on the east side. And it's those adjoining neighborhoods. And that's kind of the overarching theme, if you will, um, for the for the Blue Mile and their reference here, their project name. Okay. Just curious. We haven't heard that before. We'll make sure. It was in the town if we were going to ask money to come from the town. Absolutely. All right. Any further discussion by council? Mm -hmm. Saying that there is none, is that motion to approve? So moved. It's a say. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Moving down to agenda item 32 consideration of a motion to approve the purchase of a freight liner knuckle boom collection truck with a, uh, with a 2024 freight liner M2 chassis per source wheel contract from Southwest Applied Technology in the amount of $212,000. Mayor, when we let council, we do recommend purchase, the approval of the purchase of this uh, knuckle boom loader from Southwest Applied Technology. Um, these, these pieces of equipment are very important to us. Uh, in order to help keep our city clean and, uh, and the turnaround time on these vehicles is expensive so we do recommend approval thank you Mr. any discussion on council all right seeing that there's no is there a motion to approve so moved is there a second second all those in favor all right, all right. moving on to agenda item 33 all the business for city council Sorry, I didn't think to ask any, this in advance. On oh, the pay study, I thought we were deferring that to this meeting, but it's not on the agenda. Uh, I've got oh, several so, items. Okay. Good. Uh, any further discussion from City Council? No. All right, we'll move down to City Manager comments. Um, Mayor, members of the Council, I, I have um, several items uh, for your consideration this evening. Um, the first item, uh, I brought brought to you last at the last meeting has to do with the uh, uh, alcohol license for the Elf Lodge uh, on Jane Street, uh, and as we shared with you at that last meeting, uh, that facility previously had an alcohol license. However, I think they had a fire, and it's probably more than three years ago, and they were non-conforming use, and so that meant that they were grandfathered. But when the license went inactive uh, for a certain number of uh, days, like more than a year, uh, that license uh, went away. Uh, and because of the zoning of the property, 
uh, we are not allowed to accept an application for an alcohol license for that facility. However, in order to be able to do that, uh, it would take uh, action on, the ha on behalf of the city council that would allow us to open that process so that they could uh, apply. At the last meeting, you asked for information on uh, call for services and things of that nature, and that was included in your FYI packet. Uh, and again, over the years, um, the, the, the information that we shared, uh, the calls for services were not that, there weren't that many, I think maybe one year there were maybe four calls for service, uh, but, but nothing of, of note that, that would cause, at least I'll say to me, any major concern. And so this evening, what I'm asking you for is uh, uh, your consideration so that we could at least uh, receive an application and it would require uh, your vote and approval of the resolution uh, that the city attorney has drafted uh, in order to put uh, our city clerk in them to be able to receive the application. Uh, even, if, even though if you were to approve this this evening, uh, what would happen is they would still, they would still need to go through the process, there would still need to be a public hearing so this is just the beginning of that process, and I do recommend it for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Penny. Uh, any discussion by council? What is his own desk? It's really there. It's really It's really there. It's really there. It's really there. It's Yeah, this has been there a while. Since, at least since I was and, before and, I was born. And specifically, yeah. so well, that's the reason we need, we need Thank your approval you. to be able to even start the process. Mm -hmm. Because it was grandfathered, and then they lost that grandfather when it went, uh, the, the license went away. And so that's why, because it's only you would have to uh, approve us to be able to, take, to even begin the application process. Mm -hmm. It's still owned by the Elks Lodge. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion by council? Okay. All right, is there a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we move down to public comment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, second item uh, for your consideration. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, second item, um, and, and also included in your uh, council packet, uh, I think it was two meetings ago, uh, we had a discussion about the council pay, uh, and what we included in your packet, and your FYI packet, and under item eight, is a memo uh, from our city attorney in reference to uh, council pay. Council pay has not been increased since 2006. That's right. I think 2006 first uh, and we had some discussion we shared with you some data from other communities and where our council pay currently ranks uh, and what we were looking at um, were the recommendation um, there was a recommendation that this will only be the start of the discussion uh, the current pay for a council member is $7,500. Uh, the mayor pro tem pay is $9,250. And the mayor's pay is $18,500. Uh, and uh, th this recommendation was to increase the council pay to $10,000 for council, twelve five dollars for the mayor pro tem, and $25,000 for the mayor. And, um, and as I said, no, the current pay structure has been in place since 2004. Uh, and if y'all were to, if you were interested in uh, increasing the current compensation package for council, uh, it would require, um, we would have to advertise it. Uh, and uh, I think they'd have that to the public hearing. You'd have to act on it in, in council. And what, what this would do is you wouldn't be raising your salary. Uh, the salary increase would not take effect until after the next election. So it would be in January 2024 before the new, uh, the, an increased pay would go into effect for mayor and council if you so desire. What if, uh, what if you're running for election and you win the next election? Congratulations. And you get a pay increase. 
But what about people who aren't up for two more years? They would still be. They would still get the pay increase. This, this would affect the whole council. We would just give it to the three that will be up this time. It would be for everybody. Thank you. Council, any discussion? No way for me. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys know how I feel about it. Kane, me and Kane worked on it, and what was it, a 33%? It's, it's essentially. Yeah. Um, increase. I really would like to hear what council has to say. I kind of talked to some people, but we all got the numbers. This is not a me thing. This is a council thing. So I can tell y'all what to do, but I'd like to hear what y'all have to say. Uh, I don't have a problem with the increase. <laughs> what increase? How much? <laughs> you know, if you're talking about the big, you can big increase or can I get a hundred? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. That was a good joke. What are you looking to get to? Did you see? So, Kane said 33%. I did some research and I looked at what inflation was. I looked 2006. Mr. Penny said 2004. So I just went off of those numbers. It was 44.77 as an increase. So that's what I want to say. Um, once again, that's my decision. I'd like to hear what you guys say. Don't go off what I say. Follow your own heart. But at the end of the day, we have not had a raise for council since 2004. It's about to be 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely needed. It's definitely needed. And another point that I want to point out um, that me and Kane talked about is that the last time a raise was given, there was only two meetings a month. Um, since Mr. Penny has came, we now <laughs> <laughs> we now have three meetings a month. So which has we have work sessions. Work sessions. Yes. Good job. I'm sorry, but we did have we, work sessions before Mr. Penny. <laughs> so did you guys and we had sessions? really, really long ones. We had to deal with legal. We had to deal with the Gatto thing. So this idea that suddenly we're just working way more hours than we used to is baloney. So in 2004 <laughs> or 2006? I don't know about 2004, but I've been here since 2013, and I can tell you. I'm putting in the same amount of time now that I did in 2013. Well, the raise, it has been raised. less in some instances and I'm not lying about that. Right. Okay, so back to what I was saying that it increased fifty percent since the last raise was put in. I wasn't here in two thousand and four. None of us was here in two thousand and four. So that is something that I wanted to address. Um and you said forty five percent would <laughs> so, be ten thousand mark, forty five No no no, that's thirty three percent. Thirty three is ten thousand. Yes. How much is the forty five? Let me do the math for you. You know, I haven't started I don't. I should. Entrepreneur, So, clarification. Is it seven five? I thought it was seven five. What do we get? We don't get seven five. We get seven thousand five hundred five. Why did I think it was seven five seven five? You know what? It might be seven five five zero. It's something. It's not seventy five. Seven five five zero. I think. But anyway, that's seven thousand five hundred dollars per year. Thank you. What is it? $10,875 at 45%. Thank you, Any further discussion from council? So I was surprised when I saw the comparative listing that, that somebody found for us, how little we make here in comparison to most cities our size in Georgia. It may, and some of them don't meet but once a month, and most of them are making more than the city council in states for us. I'm trying to remember, did that have budget numbers too, or no? Do we just compare size, or do we compare size of their size, budget? The, well, we don't size, size of the city. Population. And population. I mean, population size and budget size are two different things. City Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, are, are, are work sessions covered under the attendance policy for council? Yeah. 
What's the attendance policy? Well, you can only miss so many meetings per cycle, otherwise you're you're disqualified. I don't. I'm just curious. But they're official meetings. I mean, I'll have to look at. Let me look into that before I answer. Yeah, I mean, because if we're going to pay because we're doing all this time, then I mean, one of the recommendations in the past has been pay for more, more of a per diem type setup where you're you're paid based on the, the hours we put in or the meetings we put in, similar to the board of education <coughs> and many other agencies do that. So, but. <laughs> but I, I'll just say, I mean, I, I don't know that we're doing significantly more than we're doing today. Okay. What's that? Council. I'd like to make a motion to increase council pay to 44 percent. Second. Okay. Oh. You don't have to do it today, but we don't need to get it until the 18th of July. Motion was made. Okay. It has to be advertised for three weeks in a row. Yeah. So um, the first time you'd be able to do it would be. Well, I think she's making the motion to proceed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, sorry, I didn't want to talk over you, but I mean, I'm guessing that's ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Not approving the um, the pay hike. It's just. Uh, Yes. Well, you got to go through an election. Wait, for clarification, it has to have public hearing or is it just an election? The public hearing would be the council meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We just advertise the council. When's it going to be on the council, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, so, I'm sorry, I was too slow. There's already a motion, so I guess we have to deal with that. I would be more comfortable with the 33%. It's, it's, Having to go off on of everything else we are now, I hate to say, then pay us more. And that's not exactly 33%. I just put you on nice close. round numbers on there. That's why mm -hmm. those numbers yeah. look like that. This is a roughly 33% increase across the board. Though. And I also want to throw some type of language in there that it's you know, like looked at again. Like, let's not go another 20 years without council pay being looked at. Put something in there, say re revisit it every 10 years? Sometime. So, so what is your expertise, Mr. Bingham? I was just going to say, sometimes uh, council, some councils do get like when we do across the board adjustments, you wouldn't get a pay for performance, but 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 some councils do it if there's a four percent increase. But but again, we have to make sure that that's that follows state law. Mm -hmm. That that if there's an across the board adjustment, you could uh, put that as a part of the process. But we just need to make sure that 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 would be allowable. But that would be the way to try to keep pace with everything else. Um, but if there was a cross the board adjustment, you get the same thing that that the, the staff gets. It would still need yeah. rules. It still right. have to be advertised yeah. before it all every time. And it would only take effect upon the next election too. It would not be an annual typical call on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the mayor? We're going to leave him out, right? He's done it. The motion is that everything goes up 45%. Well, I, I don't think I've ever heard the mayor not coming. I'm not going to say nothing. It's good work, but hey, all right. There you go, Jeff. Well done. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say it's not going to proceed. Are we voting? Thank you. Yeah, no, I can't. So, wait, uh, what happened? There's a motion on the second. We need to know specifically what the numbers you would increase it to in order to advertise it mm -hmm. in order to comply with the state law. So y'all need to tell us the exact numbers for council, mayor, pro tem, and mayor. And we could advertise that, and then that question would be before y'all at that July 18th meeting for consideration. Excuse me. Well, you sound like you're ready to vote on it now. 
No, no, not vote on it, but to get it going. Get the most and, and then we can vote on it in the next meeting with the correct numbers. But even to have a motion came saying he's got to have numbers now. Mm -hmm. Because we had to advertise the number. So can staff do the numbers? We can do them right now. Or I'd offer a friendly amendment. I'd be more comfortable with the numbers that you gave up. 7,592, 5, and they said now. We go from 7,500 to 10 for council members, from 9250 to 125. That's what came to hold? That was his 33%. Okay, so we said 45 for the mayor from 18. So, okay, so she, instead of me friendly amendment, they're saying, who we send yours and I can No. Just I need change. all of the numbers so that I can do the math. So 75 for us. To 10,000. No, that's the 33. She's going to go to 45. Yes. That's a terrible number. 11,000. We put 11,000 in, and that'll be a better number. So rounding it off? 11,000 for Johnson. Okay. What about Mayor Pro Tem? Thirteen five. Okay. Mayor? Yeah, I, I would ask that Mayor stay the same. No so is that 18? Mm -hmm. 18. 18. 18. 18. What about your personal contact? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm being for real. Because this isn't about it. This is about yeah. what's yeah. to come. Yeah, okay. But that one with a consistent increase would be 27,000. So how does that work? He wants to stay the same, but then we just leave his if if, if y'all want to, you just keep the mayor's annual high. salary at eighteen five. You increase council to eleven thousand. You increase mayor pro tem to thirteen five. Yeah. The mayor's giving up how much? What? The mayor's giving up how much? Nine thousand eighty five, roughly nine thousand eight five hundred. Okay. So I make a motion that council pay is raised to 11K, mayor pro tem 13.5, and the mayor stays the same. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. No, this, this is just moving it before. Just moving it forward. Just okay. moving it forward. Mm -hmm. To advertise it. Well, advertising. A motion for Kane to advertise. Advertise. Okay. We didn't finish. 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 All those in favor? We had a first and a second. Yes. Yes. We had three, four. So far. Who was opposed? You got to ask. Any opposed? Nay. Oh, okay. Well, my bad. My bad, Shelly. So it's three or two? All right. So I'm ready to go to the next item. Okay. Mayor, members of the council, earlier, in, in, when we started our work session, and I, 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 we had the update from the business innovation group, I told y'all that uh, council member Borium wasn't here, so we had a chance to, he wasn't able to have any input uh, in that discussion. Uh, and, and as I stated in that meeting, uh, earlier, the concern I had was uh, when we started out with that project was the, the concern about the training facility uh, and, and you heard me ask um, uh, Dominique about um, being able to have more space for more than 35 people. Uh, but at the same time, the city is, is committed uh, to a half million dollars to, to make that project go forward. So I wanted to, to and I, I talked to the council member Borium earlier in the day, and there was no action taken by the council, but I did want to just, as we would do for any of our council members, provide an opportunity for a council member to have uh, some input in the discussion. Um, as we talked earlier, um, 
in the environment that we're in right now, um, we don't know, and, and Dominique was very hesitant um, uh, to know whether even with the revisions and the plans, uh, if the, the, the cost would come in within the $2.25 million, which is available for renovation. But I just wanted to bring this back up so that Councilman Laboya might have an opportunity to share any thoughts or concerns that he had um, with the mayor and the council. Well, Leah, do you remember when we passed the original memorandum of understanding? I know you sent it to me. Sorry, it was like three or four years ago. Uh, the only 2021. 2021, okay, sir. Um, the, the, my only consideration or my concern is this, is when we originally started talking about this and I walked through the, the facility a number of times, is that this was supposed to be, that our contribution, what we were supposed to get in return, is a space that was available for training, public service training, cops, firefighters, uh, public works, and this kind of thing. Now when we say, when they say that there's only 35 uh, spaces, there's 35 spaces in the classroom now. Mm -hmm. There's there's nowhere in this new uh, development that, that can hold what we need, which is all of our firefighters would be in one place, all of our public work people. And not just that, but to offer regional training. So to offer training to the firefighters in the region, to the police in the region, because our neighbors, Portal, Brooklyn, they don't have the kind of money to even go to Savannah. You don't need, you don't see these folks even going to Savannah uh, because it's too expensive just for, so if we can create a, the, the, the idea originally was to create a training facility. And my only, again, my concern is I look at the existing plan and there's not a single square foot for additional training space. And so I, I ask, what are we getting for our $500,000 when that was the original intent? And I, I, I'm not a big fan of bringing this up. I mean, I'm a big fan of it, but I mean, multiple times walking through that place, it was supposed to be for training. The EDA grant is for training, disaster relief. You know, I mean, the money originally came from Hurricane uh, Matthew, Matthew, or you know, Matthew, I think. So, I mean, it's designed to train our firefighters in response time, train our tree cutting folks to respond to power lines down, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, my my only concern is I look at this existing plan and none of that is there. Uh, Mayor, I did ask if we could look at some, uh, um, if they could look and see if they could not expand the meeting area to accommodate 75 to 100 people. And, and Dominique did say that they were going to go back to, to the architect to okay. see if that was uh, possible because I, I agree <coughs> that 35 people that that's a small group but if we can get to sit get the close to 75 or even 100 I think would be better well we we've already put in for the building that has 35 so we've already put up money for that so I mean this was supposed to be for expanding right additional money for expanding our and so you know I mean it, it's tough for me to bring this up I mean, you can understand but I mean, the drawing to me does not match what our intent was, which was training. So, I'm not sure what we need to do. Uh, if, if you know, if, if they're going to go back and, and, and rework the plan, I suppose that's okay. But I'm not sure. That, I, it, here's the thing: this is an EDA project, and if we put something in that doesn't work for us, it's there for 20 plus years. You can't. You can't redevelop it. You talking about the floor plan that we saw today? Yes. Yeah. Um, There's no meeting space in there. I saw that. Uh, yeah. And uh, there was like, uh, there was a 35 studio, <coughs> is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, Must have a little person cramped into a. Uh, it's an office, yeah. A little tiny office? Yeah. Or um, can't they, is it a big, big fold dividers that uh, you use at the uh, social hall in the church? <laughs> that, that's what we have if we could somehow get to the answer to meeting space and, and that, that was the discussion and that's what we were trying to trying to get to because if we wanted to have all our police officers we need to be able to at least get sent to some people in the world. Yeah. and that's the ultimate goal I think we'd like to have more than 100 but if we can get to 75 I think it would be a step in the right direction 
Agreed. Okay. Any further discussion by council? May I do guess up a few more things? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, well, it's the last meeting of the year. What do you expect, right? You're right. Uh, at the last meeting, we had a gentleman to come forward about the ice cream truck, uh, and we did do a little bit of checking. And um, what we found is, under our current ordinance, um, we we are dealing with um, he falls under well, the ice cream truck. If they are going to be making something other than just um, selling prepackaged things, it's a food truck, mm -hmm. and and so so what we wanted, we, we need to make some provisions for the ice cream truck. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to come back to council and simply say, if, if that's what you want us to do, we can make the provisions, mm -hmm. uh, and and we can get that prepared to bring it back to you for in an order form. But in order for it to be a, a ice cream truck that's separate from a food truck, basically you have to serve something that's already prepackaged, uh, and 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 we can do that. That's what ice cream truck do. Yeah. And so, just one. The to me. And then the other thing is just got to make sure folks got license and stuff when they drive an ice cream truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the last. Last two things I want to mention to you. Two. Um, <laughs> said y'all uh, about GM, GMA conferences this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're going to go to dinner on Saturday, I need to know. Uh, and so I'll, I will reach out to you again for you to tell me if you're going and uh, so that we can firm up the numbers for, for that event. And then the only other thing I'm is the food bank groundbreaking next to okay. you love the you didn't have that much this week <laughs> all right we move down to public comments all right you, you know, any public comments nobody's saying all right we move down to agenda item 36 consideration for a motion to enter executive session for personnel matters um in accordance with OCGA 5014-13. Is there a motion to go into executive session? So Is there a second? What's that? Personnel. Personnel, I already said personnel. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. The second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye